Ladies and ladies and gentlemen, fellow Ambazonians, and welcome to the broadcast. I should start with some apologies for this late coming. Today, we had some uh, unforeseen technical uh, problems, but uh, I am glad, I am excited. We are finally able to make it here tonight. Good evening, Ground Zero. Good evening, uh, Ground One. Of course, I always forget about you, but uh, I remember you today. Uh, good evening, uh, Continental USA, Canada included, and of course, South America. It's always a privilege to come to you with updates, updates on our revolution. I have, an, I have a very, very exciting show today with uh, personalities that you can learn, learn a lot from. So please, I'd like you to stay tuned. And as usual, I expect you to go ahead within five minutes. Within five minutes, hit your share button. Let us, let us make it at least, at least 700 people on the Facebook platform. And so I can come to you with the presentation proper. I want to believe all of you had a wonderful, a wonderful weekend, except for those on ground zero who have to run away from bullets and from terrorists on a daily basis. So please uh, go ahead again, as usual, hit your share button. Let us populate the platform. We have over 400 already on Facebook within the next three minutes, hit it up to 700 so that I can come to you with this uh, broadcast proper. I have with me in the set, on the set, on the set, from my uh, right, from my right, I have with me uh, Comrade uh, Valentine, Barista Valentine Gala from the great state of Arkansas joining me live from Arkansas. And I also have right there, uh, I would have said ladies and gentlemen, but uh, because Ghana is right on my right, I choose to go with you. But uh, you have uh, the one and only one powerful Amber lady who has distinguished herself, who is uh, part of this panel tonight uh, by the name Dr. Emma Osong. I hope I got the, right, the, the last name right. Uh, she is Dr. Omar Olson. She is an aerospace engineer. I, I, I hope I got this right too. She is also an author, a political uh, uh, activist, and of course, one of the leaders of this Amber Revolution. Uh, this is the first time she's joining us on ABC. And of course, I have a familiar face that you always know, recognize, the one and only in Tumfoin, Bo Herbert. Uh, joining the set. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I will get back to you. Uh, I need to take some, uh, do some housekeeping before uh, we get back to this uh, conversation proper. So before we get there, all right, I need to do uh, a few uh, updates and, uh, and some announcements too. Uh, fellow Ambazonians, uh we have we have an ngo an ngo that is based in boya that ngo uh is called let me locate the name of that ngo that ngo is putting up an event in uh boya and that NGO is one of the NGOs <clears throat> being sponsored by the French, and I'm in France. This is one of the peace, so-called peace uh, ambassadors uh, NGO that is being sponsored by the French, the French embassy precisely in Yaoundé. They are hosting this event on, uh, on the 20th, December 20th, that's about four days from today, at the Mountain Hotel in Boya, and time is 11 a.m., and that NGO is called uh, Kawopen, Cameroon Women's Peace Movement. Kawopen, Cameroon Women's Peace Movement. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I bring you this information to remind you, especially if you are one of the managers of this NGO, one of the directors of this NGO, this NGO is one among those banned from doing any form of business in all of the territory called Ambazonia. And we have uh, passed this information to the restoration forces that we do not want to see this NGO, Cameroon Women's Peace Movement, doing any form of business anywhere in the territory that is called Ambazonia. And so this meeting uh, scheduled for Mountain Hotel in Boya on December 12th is banned, is banned from happening in our territory. We will not, again, w these women are uh, making gains, making profit all over the dead bodies of Ambazonians and we will not tolerate them holding this conference at a mountain hotel in Boya. And so again, we have given our restoration forces instructions, instructions to stop this meeting holding at the Mountain Hotel on Saturday, the 20th of December. This meeting is not taking place. And again, this organization, Cameroon Women's Peace Movement, is banned from having any business in Ambazonia. We have made it very, very clear from our last uh, uh, broadcast that we are only tolerating NGOs working on ground zero, affiliated with the United Nations, uh, as it call it, OCHA, based in Boya. Any other NGO not, not affiliated with OCHA is not welcome on ground zero. And the so-called peace ambassadors they are banned from having any business to do with uh, Ground Zero. And again, uh, Cameroon Women's Peace Movement, your conference uh, holding at the Mountain Hotel in Boya on December 20th is banned. Is banned. And restoration forces have been given instruction to enforce this ban. You go there or participate in that meeting, you do so at your own risk. All right. That is very, very critical. Then, ladies and gentlemen, uh, La Republic, a few days ago, La Republique du Cameroon issued a statement in French uh, allegedly withdrawing all its forces from Ambazonia into the barracks between December the 15th and uh, January the 5th. Uh, we, have, we do not know how authentic that piece of information is. But we believe this is a ploy by the regime in Yaoundé to clamp down on our restoration forces. We are advising our restoration forces and the general amber population for Christmas and the New Year to please, to please stay at home to celebrate your Christmas and New Year. This is for your own safety. We have received information that even though La Republique du Cameroon pretends to want to pull out its troops from our territory, they will be leaving out many snipers, many snipers on the streets and in the quarters because they believe, they believe the restoration forces will be out to celebrate Christmas and to celebrate the new year. And so we're encouraging all the restoration forces and the general population of Ambazonia, please do everything possible to stay home as you celebrate Christmas and the New Year. Again, this is about your own safety, your own security. We do not trust La Republic du Cameroon. And besides that, we, are, we have also learned that they are sending in thousands of troops, thousands of troops into Libya instructions have been given French Cameroon troops to get Phil Masha dead or alive before February the 9th. This is intelligence that we have received. And so, if you are in Libya, living anywhere in Libya, we caution you, uh, the coming days will not look very, very good. La Republic is invading Libya, with the goal of destabilizing the red dragons 
and if possible, uh, killing or abducting uh, the field marshal. So please take note of that information. Then, ladies and gentlemen, we are declaring an amagadon, amagadon over French Cameroon plan elections for February the 9th. We are asking every Ambazonian, these elections, every one of us, every one of us can play a rule. You can play a rule, even if you are not a restoration force or a restoration fighter, you can play a rule by staying home. Staying home for all the election activity. Number two, expose any election campaign taking place in your community, in your quarter, wherever you live, you find any election campaign, please send the news to us or send the news to the closest restoration camp around you. You can, this, this is the rule you can play by disseminating information about any election campaign and or calling the restoration forces to report any campaign activity in your area. This is very, very important. We have banned that election from taking place in our territory and we mean business. We declare an amagadon on that election. La Republic du Cameroon shall never, 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 ever have the right to conduct any form of political activity on our territory. And so please, everybody, let's all work together to frustrate La Republic of Cameroon's February the 9th election. They are out distributing money even through SDF parliamentarians and senators. We just saw what happened in Batibo. We learned that in Bandam, in Bandam, in Bandam, Joseph in Bandam, the one who said in 2019, October 22nd, 2017, I beg your pardon, that he has re resigned from politics, from CPDM as their politics, he went to Batibo, we have learned that he allegedly dished out 15 million to one of our commanders so that he can allow them to carry on their campaign. Unfortunately, I've just seen some very terrible photographs coming from Batibo of his home raised down. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a message to every enabler Every enabler, be it CPDM, SDF, who wants to run for French Cameroon organized elections, let us all tell them they are in the wrong territory. They are in the wrong territory. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have almost a thousand people already. Thank you for joining uh, the program. As we go ahead, please continue to hit your share button as you join continue to hit your share button as you join at this moment i would like to uh take us into this uh, broadcast proper with the conversation the conversation with my panel here comrade uh bo herbert uh comrade ghana and uh, comrade uh, emma and so why I bring that uh, conversation to you, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like you to, again, continue to hit your share button. Continue to hit uh, your share button as I bring you the monologue. The monologue for this conversation. And once more, I'd like to say good evening to you, Ground Zero. Ladies and gentlemen fellow Ambazonians. Within the last three weeks, the last three weeks or so, we have observed one move after another from either the international community to pressure La Republic du Cameroon to end the genocidal war on Ambazonia or from French Cameroon aim at furthering its killings of Southern Cameroonians all the way, all the way to the end of the conflict 
and towards actualizing its annexation of Ambazonia. To put it in another way, when it is not the international community exerting tremendous pressure on La Republic du Cameroon to end the genocidal war in our territory, Ambazonia, it is La Republic du Cameroon executing one fraud after another in the guise of proffering solutions to the conflict. Barely a month ago, we watched from the floor of the House of Commons in London, members taking turns to demand that La Republic du Cameroon be expelled from the Commonwealth and that the UK steps up diplomatic pressure that gets La Republic du Cameroon to end the humanitarian catastrophe in genocidal war. Just when we thought that was all, another pressure group, a delegation of three made up of the leaders of the Commonwealth, the African Union, and the Francophonie descended on Yaoundé with more pressure, more pressure to bear on La Republic du Cameroon. Since returning to London after that visit, the head of the Commonwealth we have learned has issued what one should consider an indictment, an indictment on the regime in Yaoundé, bluntly threatening in the statement to Paul Beer that the Commonwealth is deleting his country from the consort of the former British colonies. Should, should he, should Paul be a delay in showing commitment towards ending the war and ending the genocide emanating from the war? But just when you imagine that these should humble La Republique du Cameroon to the extent that they have a, a, a rethink of the provocation they have carried out to the, exacerbate this war, the last week, its parliament voted to pass just another obnoxious bill, the so-called bilingualism bill, a bill that should only further the annexation and integration policy of Ambazonia by La Republic du Cameroon. When the United Nations Security Council members, the USA, Belgium, the Germans, and the Poles, amongst others, issued a stinking impeaching statement calling for La Republic du Cameroon to stop the atrocities and immediately embrace the Swiss Dialogue Initiative. Guess what happens? Mr. Beer jumps the next day and summons an extraordinary session of parliament to consider his special status for Ambazonians in which he hopes to assuage the wrath of the international community. This doesn't last long before the U.S. Congress issues a stinking letter a statement that essentially indicts French Cameroon and its military of the killings and the destruction of homes and villages. In this congressional letter, La Republique du Cameroon is once more, once more, ladies and gentlemen, urged to cooperate with the Swiss initiative then, immediately, the congressional letter lands on the table of the regime in Etudi. Whoever runs it from there, a communique exclusively in the French language as usual, is sent out asking all their troops, all their troops in our territory to pull out beginning Sunday, December the 15th, that was yesterday, until after the new year. The point is that La Republique du Cameroon, La Republique du Cameroon, ladies and gentlemen, is fighting tooth and nail with every rudimentary tactic in the book to avoid ever mounting international pressure. But its own missteps only keep on keeping it in the net, keeping them in the net, in the domain of pressure. Last month, they hurriedly put together the so-called Grand National Dialogue, hoping 
the idea bears them out of international pressure and give them reasons to avoid the Swiss negotiations. They thought they could blindfold the international community with half window dressing made. package called special status. The mystery in the special package or special status has finally been unveiled. Though still on the table of debate, rejection especially from those who have all along been allies of the regime has set in. So the question is, after the world rejects their grand national dialogue, rejects their so-called bilingual rejects their special status and insists, insists, insists on negotiations without preconditions. What next? What next? What is the Cameroon going to do? What should Ambazonians be doing now to keep the pressure mounting? Our panel answers these questions and also take your questions. So ladies and gentlemen, join me once more, welcome the panel uh, to the set. Uh, again, I'm joined by Barrister uh, Valentine Ghana, Dr. Emma Osong, and Ntumfong uh, Bo Herbert. Good to see you, ladies and gentlemen. Good to Thank see you. you. All right. I will start, um, if we were in the gathering, of course, it will always be ladies and gentlemen. So let me start with the lady in the house. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Olson, to be where we are today, would you give, would you give this mounting pressure on our Republic to Cameroon on uh, on the pre I mean, on the effort that Ambazonians have put forth. Chris, I'm having some trouble hearing you. Could you repeat that? Okay, I can hear you. Yes, I am asking, would you give the credit for the pressure that La Republic du Cameroon is having to the effort that Ambazonians continue to put forth? I got you there. All right. Thank you, Chris, for this opportunity to um, have this discussion with my co-panelists here, as well as your audience that are gathering around the world. Um, I want to commend you for to communicate directly with the people on zero and begin by expressing my deepest condolences for all our brothers and sisters who have been killed as a result of this war and also offer prayers for those who in this festive season of Christmas have very little to celebrate and that their brothers and sisters and the good will to around the world have them in mind and as effort to date to bring aid and comfort and cessation of hostilities to them. So with that, uh, let me go to your question. You're asking if I understood you clearly whether credit for what has happened to date uh, is, for, is, is for the diaspora? Is that what you said? Yes, it's not, not for the diaspora, for Ambazonians as a whole. I believe so, Chris. Um, there's something to be said about mobilization activism practiced by Ambazonians uh, since 2000. A quality that one around the world, yes, was in our DNA, which is to stand up, to rally, to spare no effort, knocking at doors, calling on the international community. There is, um, there is a, 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 a statistic out there that I believe Amazonians have, have earned for themselves, which is the rapid um, approach, the rapid method they have used to bring 
the crisis of their people to the doorstep of the international community. Even though three years of suffering is still ongoing, it has been one of those tragic wars in Africa where Ambazonian activism has allowed the world to begin to turn its attention to that part of the world. Mind you, we still need more of that. And more importantly, we need to all now start turning our attention to engaging with the internal community in a manner that shows our collaboration, our cohesiveness, and our clarity, the singular focus that we want the world to come to our aid around, which is cessation of hostilities, a return to the, 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 the state of our people, which is free, independent, and good neighbors in the region of our Central Africa. So you are right in saying that the credit goes to Ambazonians. It goes to them, but there's still more work to be done. There is still lost. There is still an occupying force in every village in Ambazonia. There are deaths reported. They are not going to school. So the crisis is far from over. I don't believe there is any moment now than before to insist and put more pressure and continue to call on the international community to not relent. As I speak, uh, you just mentioned the UK, the UN, and all the uh, Security Council members' outings this past week, calling on the BIAS government to end hostilities. Of course, we've seen the recent outings by the um, Subcommittee on uh, African Affairs, calling on an independent investigation into the horrific human disaster unfolding that has been described by some as genocide in the making. As I come to this program this afternoon, I've just been made aware of a group in France that is a, a coalition of Fr French-speaking uh, Paul and, and those of Quebec writing to the uh, representative of France to the U United Nations, calling on them, as a matter of fact, shaming them about their absence and silence during the past UN Security Council outings. In other words, asking them whether is this the time for France to be quiet rather than coming out and condemning their uh, student, Mr. Uh, President Bia, as to what. So um, I want to close the piece by saying that yes, we must have hope. This is not the time to celebrate. Our brothers and sisters are still dying. We are still under the, the uh, barrel of a gun. Our children are not going to school. Our young uh, sisters are being raped. We still are far from living as free people in our own land. And now is not the time to celebrate. We must roll our sleeves, get to work, and actually begin the project everybody is looking for us to do. Us, meaning uh, the Amazonia Southern Cameroonians, as well as the other parties to the conflict, the Republic of Cameroon, to engage in substantiations that once and for all return permanent lasting peace to everyone in the region. All right, thank you, thank you. Let me go to uh, Comrade Ghana uh, at this moment. Comrade Ghana, uh, in spite of all the pressure, all of the pressure, La Republica Cameroon keeps on moving from one window dressing effort to the other. Isn't this international mockery to the international community? Comrade Ghana? Comrade Ghana, can you hear me? All right, uh, Comrade Bo, I will pose that same question to you. Isn't it mockery, mockery of international proportion that uh, La Republic to Cameroon continue to 
uh, carry on all this window dressing, ignoring the pressure that is coming from uh, the international community. Yeah, thank you very much, Chris, and uh, welcome, uh, Emma Osong, welcome, uh, Brother Ghana, to this show. And uh, my greetings to our people on Ground Zero, our people locked up in the dungeons of La Republic, our people, you know, just trying to survive in the bush, in the forest, in uh, refugee camps, our people, you know, out there doing Hello. battle with La Republic de Cameroon and making sure that they can defend our communities and our people. I, I don't think, Brother Chris, that La Republic de Cameroon is ignoring what is going on. La Republic de Cameroon is in a corner where they do not know what to do next. Remember, it is said by Chino Achebe, those the Lord wants to destroy the first make mad. And remember also in the Bible, when it was time for Pharaoh to be delivered the worst defeat, he was as obstinate as Mr. Bia is right now. So he is fully aware of what the world is serving him by way of notice. The Security Council and the Congress of the United States, two of the biggest institutions that lead to independence for any people, have said very clearly, go to the negotiating table without preconditions. Mr. Beer knows he cannot get around that. They have also told him, in no uncertain terms, you will not win military victory against the people of Ambazonia. And they have said, we hold you responsible we hold you responsible and we hold your troops responsible for what is going on. They have now just said in a statement by the president, the chairperson of the Foreign Affairs Committee of the US Congress, that they do not intend to allow impunity with respect to the mass human rights violations, gross human rights violations that have happened so far. So Mr. Bien knows that he is an unindicted war criminal. He knows that he is going down. He knows that this 2020, if he survives to see it, will be a year during which he will be unmade. It will be a year when he will be pulled down from that presidency and when Ambazonia will be free. Because the world is gladly waking up to the reality that we have been singing ever since, that we are two people, two countries, two independents, two territories, two republics, and that we have no business to be attached to these people. Mr. Bia is hoping that all the small gimmicks that he tries, whether it is major national dialogue or it is special status, that this could fly. But the letter from the Congress of the United States says in very, in, in very certain terms, it says those internal initiatives have failed and they will fail. They serve him advance warning that elections will serve no purpose, that disarmament and demobilization will serve no purpose, that all these fictitious things he's trying to do will serve no purpose. And the last warning is that they are accessing policy towards Cameroon. And if you remember, Ambassador Thibault Nagy had said, the boundaries of Cameroon are as of now. When they're accessing policy with respect to Cameroon, we expect sanctions to follow. We expect the division to be concretized. And we expect the United States to reaffirm its vote, along with 63 other countries on the 21st of April 1961, to recognize Ambazonia, Southern Cameroons at the time, as an independent country. Uh, Comrade Ghana, I don't know whether you heard the question. Did you hear the question? Uh, I joined in uh, when uh, Comrade Bo Hebert was speaking, so I did not hear the specific question. If you, would, if you wouldn't mind repeating that to me, I would appreciate that. Sure. The question was, uh, isn't it uh, essentially mockery, mockery of international proportion that La Republic du Cameroon continues to ignore the voices uh, from the international community? It's, it's, it's absolute mockery, as Mr. Bo Hebert uh, very articulately said. But I want to take a look at it from a different angle. I want to take a look at it from the historical basis of how French Cameroon came about and how the independent nation of 
of British Cameroon came about, or Ambazonia. We have to go back to the First World War, and we have to remember that it was the projection of United States power that defeated Germany and saved France from the boots of German aggression. It was following World War I at the Treaty of Versailles that British Cameroons came about and French Cameroons came about. La République du Cameroon, with the overt assistance of France, is acting as if La République du Cameroon or French Cameroon is the successor state of German Cameroon. Absolutely, it is not. La République du Cameroon is acting as if during the Treaty of Versailles, the whole of German Cameroon, absent the parts that were, were, that were, were carved out to, 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 to chart to Central African Republic and, 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 and others, that, that, that France was the sole trusteeship that the German Cameroon that was left over was given to. Absolutely not. There was a British Cameroon and a French Cameroon. And for France to be supporting La Republique du Cameroon the way it is, it is not just a mockery of international law, but it is spitting directly into the face of the United States who came and saved France from German aggression. Fast forward from the end of First World War to World War II. The only way France maintained Alsace-Lorraine, which was given to France at the Treaty of Versailles at the conclusion of the First World War, was because Woodrow Wilson, the American president then, presided over the Treaty of Versailles. The same Treaty of Versailles that gave France govern governorship over Alsace-Lorraine gave the, the right of British Cameroons as an independent entity in international law. Again, U.S. power saved France from the boot of Nazi tyranny. And France is turning and repaying the free world. France is turning and repaying the United States by going contrary to U.S. policy that is rightfully so in Ambazonia but by then, spitting but, but, in the but, face of the United States there. and supporting let me, French Cameroon. Let me stop you a little bit there and play the devil's advocate here. The French will say Cameroon is our colony. It used to be our colony. We still have treaties with, with Cameroon. Why would they have to listen to what the U.S. says? On January 1st, 1960, French Cameroon, called La République du Cameroon, got its independence from France, or pseudo sort of independence, hyphenated by the 1959 French Accords. When French Cameroon got its independence, as authorized by UN Resolution 1514, the Southern Cameroons or Ambazonia was not part of French Cameroon, was not part of La République du Cameroon. The boundary between Ambazonia and French Cameroon has been marked by the United Nations. And so France has no legal authority or title to the extension of French Cameroon to Ambazonia. Ambazonia is an independent entity in international law consistent with the Treaty of Versailles, consistent with UN Resolution 1514, and consistent with UN Re Resolution 1608. So France absolutely does not have that claim. All right, talking about France, I will pose this question to all of you. We have seen that of all the major powers, uh, let, let me put it this way, the international community, you have the Americans, you have the EU, you have the Commonwealth, you have the Canadians, of course the Swiss, and you can name the rest. Each of these powers have said they want uh, dialogue, negotiation, without preconditions. And France is the only country, the only country that has said we don't endorse the Swiss initiative and what took place in Yawande in the so-called Grand National Dialogue is the way to go. What is it going to take? What uh, should Ambazonians do to get the French off the back of this revolution? All of you, any, any of you can take the question and start with Emma. <laughs> I was just going to interject there that uh, the last I checked, uh, the country France was a member of the European Union and by extension endorses the Swiss-led initiative. 
So I do see a scenario where... If I may I stop you there, I think you may be wrong there because only, uh, I think, two weeks ago, I had Rebecca Tinsley here of uh, the organization called is it World Peace or something like that. I remember, she, was, she initiated the letter, the letter with 50 signatures that was written to the French president asking them to facilitate the Swiss dialogue. And the French replied and said, uh, what took place in Cameroon? The so-called Grand National Dialogue is what they endorse. So, yes, the European Union may be saying, we stand for the Swiss initiative, but the French are behind sponsoring a different agenda. What is it going to take for Amazonians to get the French off of this revolution? I, I, I think you are asking the question, and, and the honors should really be put on uh, the country France and not on the good people of southern Cameroon or Amazonia. Remember that parties to a conflict, uh, it's like taking a horse to water. You can't make it drink. It has to come willingly. Look at France. Again, we have to all be clear what's clearly on the table for us to, to appreciate and therefore engage um, correctly. France is a member of EU. By extension, France is party or in, on, on record endorsing the Swiss-led process. As far as I understand, the country, France, has not come out to either uh, negate the Swiss-led process or to categorically state it is not taking part. Now, if you go back to the Grand National Dialogue as a, as a premise, you have to understand that the Republic of Cameroon, La République du Cameroon, would like to normalize the, the, the current happenings in Cameroon, and by extension, France, for the obvious reasons. They have interest in France, and they, they, uh, Cameroon is, is um, essentially an extension of the country. So I don't see a scenario under which France would not be on record endorsing the Grand, Grand National Dialogue. However, I'm not sure that we have seen anything on record from France stating or indicating that they do not support the Swiss process. It, we, we have to be a, a, a conscious of the fact that during the last Security Council outing, France essentially abstained and uh, is, on, is being called out by that action because it speaks volumes, the right, fact that right. they were and silent. That's the point I'm trying to make here. Exactly. Second They're first. silent on it, and, and that's telling. And it is for us Southern Cameroonians to name them and shame them, because while the rest of the world calling out the atrocities by La Republique du Cameroon, human violation, it is unconscionable that a country um, at the level of a member of the UN Security Council, whose charter is to guarantee peace around the world and to intervene when life, liberty, and, and the freedoms of people are at stake, that when uh, the question of the crisis in southern Cameroon and La Rue du Cameroon, the country France is silent. In, as a matter of fact, the letter I just shared with you today from uh, the Friends of France and Quebec addressed to the French ambassador to the United Nations precisely names them out and calls them out as to their silence in the face of this Rwanda genocide in the making scenario currently in our country, uh, Southern Cameroon. So I, I would say that as long as Southern Cameroonians continue what they're doing, getting the international uh, bodies to not relent efforts to bring La Republique to the table for, for negotiations, um, I don't believe that France will not come along and endorse what everybody else believes is path to sustainable, permanent, and lasting peace in the area. So that's then, my short... Uh, let me pose point. this question to uh, both uh, Ghana and Bo. They can add any other thing to what you have said. But you are talking about the French endorsing the end result of the negotiation. What if they hinder and stop the negotiation, allow any of them to, to, to take charge? Uh, Ghana, go ahead, please. Uh, I, I don't think uh, France can hinder negotiations as 
as it pertains to Ambazonia. Because Ambazonia is not Ivory Coast. Ambazonia is not Mali. Ambazonia is not Congo. Ambazonia was never French territory. We also have to do our part, us as Ambazonians, to continue to educate the world, to continue to educate <clears throat> U.S. senators and legislators that France is misleading the world as it comes to Ambazonia. We have to remind the world that France misled the United States when it came to Vietnam and, and, and misled the, 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 the United States that, uh, into a conflict that the U.S. did not, uh, that, 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 that the, the, the U.S. Sh shouldn't have been there. We have to uh, remind the world, if you examine it closely, that France misled the United States and the rest of the world into the conflict in Libya that is leading to so much catastrophe and so many deaths. We have to remind the world that in Ivory Coast, and there was a U.S. senator in 2011 who came out and said that France misled the world by subverting the democratic process there in the Ivory Coast. So we have to do our job in sensitizing the world whether we are, we are talking about parliamentarians in England, in South Africa, in Germany, all over the world, we have to step up our sensitization campaign. You are there in Houston. There's a French consulate in Houston. There's a French consulate in Chicago, in D.C., all over. Mr. Bo Hebert led a very, very uh, useful rally against the French uh, embassy in Washington. We have to up our game in exposing and as dr emma has said shaming the, shaming the french and we are already doing a lot to 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 push our case past the french last year in may in the areas forum at the un the vote there was uh 10 against four with china abstaining so even with french abstinence if we keep doing what we are doing we will lead our efforts to the freedom of Ambazonia, despite French hindrance. Uh, Mr. Bo, you might want to chime in there. Yes, Bo, please. Go yeah, ahead. I'm, I'm going to come in. Uh, just to say first that this is a very serious question, and I want Ambazonians to understand what's going on. The French and La République du Cameroon are twins. They are father and son. Right. Mr. Bia famously says that he is the best pupil of the French president. So we want the French and Cameroon at the table face, facing Ambazonia. Cameroon is not an adult country to negotiate. They got a pseudo independence. They have no right to decide anything. The French are still in charge. So we want them at the table. We don't want them endorsing anything. They are party to this conflict, and they right. should not fool around. They should not try to hide because they're too big to hide. These are a people, the only people in Europe today who continue to inflict this crime against humanity called colonization against millions, hundreds of millions of Africans. These are the same people who slaughtered a million Algerians because they wanted independence. They slaughtered 600,000 Madagascans because they wanted independence. 700,000 Bamileke and Basa people because they wanted independence. The same people who continue today to submit our people to economics and financial slavery through a currency that has no value, that they themselves do not accept, and that they manage to keep afloat because they have worked the international system to a point where they have their point person at the International Monetary Fund forever. This is a country that needs serious tackling when next year the world reconsiders whether the world was decolonized, whether African countries were decolonized. The French are the same people who are going around lobbying right now to make sure that they can provide support to La République du Cameroon to get loans and grants who are sneaking in the back and trying to provide them with the soft grants, with the non-refundable grants that they need for reconstruction of Ambazonia. They have no right to do any business in Ambazonia. Absolutely no right. And they are party to this conflict and they need to come to the table. I hope there's a session before the, 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 the French parliament tomorrow and I know that French parliamentarian will be giving an earful to the president, President Emmanuel Macron, including on the issues of Ambazonia. And we encourage French parliamentarians to tell him the truth 
because this man is ruining your country. If you ever said your country is the country of human rights, you have in, never in ever fine. lived up in to that fine. expectation. Do you and think that wants the French are any different from their president? I mean, policy. it's a matter of uh, policy of years to years. Do you think, because you are appealing to the French and their parliamentarians, are they any different from their leaders? Uh, well, look, parliamentarians are who they are. They have a possibility to call government to book. And so we are not going to give up on people who have a small chance of pushing our agenda. By the way, the French know that they were, they were struggling in the back to try and offer money, money, money to support the Swiss-led process. It was rejected, rightly so. The French should not sponsor anything about the Swiss-led process. To whom were the, to whom were the French for giving money for from the back? No, oh yeah, they know what I'm talking about. The French know what I'm talking about. They also know that they had to switch out the ambassador in Cameroon. The current ambassador, Christophe Giroux, um, moved in there with an agenda to take out the warlord who was the former ambassador, who was funding everything. They're doing everything by the textbook of, of, of Rwanda, perpetrating a genocide like they did in Rwanda, and they need to be shamed. So yeah, I will go back to the question for all of you. What should we Ambazonians be doing to counter everything that the French are doing? We see them, for example, training so-called peace ambassadors for Ambazonia when the war is still going on. We see them uh, putting money in the pockets of NGOs to go out and carry out peace lectures everywhere in Ambazonia. What should Ambazonians be doing to counter what the French are doing? Uh, Chris, this is Emma. Let me let me venture an answer there. I I, I think uh, my co-panelists here can come up with some really uh, sound solutions. Uh, I don't want to creative solutions because I'm on record as saying our republic is known for its creative solutions to solve uh, problems, just so that it doesn't address the actual problem at hand. Um, one thing that we can be doing is what we are doing here on this platform, which is communicating amongst ourselves, uh, sharing information, getting everybody on board with the fact that we are not a captured people. We weren't colonized, we weren't captured at war. We are essentially living in a country where we are considered a second class uh, to, to say the French word, and that our rights are being trampled upon, and that what we are asking is right, correct, and the truth. It's based on legalities, is historically uh, correct, and we need not go in as beggars, even though we are the weaker party, but that as long as we make the international community as well as La Republique know that the non-negotiables and that we are peaceful, pragmatic, peace-loving people, I repeat that, seeking a permanent lasting solution, but we don't want war, but we shall defend ourselves if war is, is declared on us. The second thing that we can do, and I believe that we are trying to do that, is to let our brothers and sisters know who today call themselves representatives in a government for which the people have soundly and categorically rejected participation in is is to continue to tell them that they don't represent the people on the ground they have no constituencies therefore every action that they participate in only goes to legitimize a government that has taken arms, causing mayhem on people who were essentially peaceful, seeking just the resolution of problems that they themselves know are the problem, because they are on record the words of their own president saying exactly what their crime is. This is the best case for any lawyer. My, my good friend here on the panel, <laughs> lawyer here will tell you that if La Republic were the, the, the um, 
uh, the defendant and he would he would be quite happy to to take the case for the plaintiff because he knows that um, he's going to get judge, judgment of in favor of his side so these are simple things we need to continue to hold our ground because as true as is a legally correct and treatment extend that we still have parliamentarians to the extent that we still have people participating in this creation of a, of of solutions to problems that don't exist do exist mind you but as the symptoms only such that they abstain from addressing the root problems is part of the problems that we now i want to say that the parliamentarians essentially are giving the cover legitimacy to be uh, and as long as our, our people are rejecting and going uh, uh, only to the table to say they reject that is the extent to which we can do this and I, i'd like to hear my other panelists here have yes, uh, but one last thing yeah. okay. it is about getting to the negotiation table <clears throat> and we have to continue to to us to 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 let the world know that we are the pragmatic party to this conflict and we are willing ready and and, and engage in in seeking lasting solution through uh, dialogue and negotiations all right uh comrade Ghana again I go back to that uh, question what should somebody on ground zero be doing to counter what the French are doing what should those in the diaspora be doing to counter what the French are doing? I know you mentioned about uh, rallies and stuff, but let's get to some other, uh, for somebody on ground zero, what should they be doing? Yes, uh, uh, there's, there's, there's one part of our history that can immensely inform us about what people on, on ground zero can be doing to, to, to counter what the French are doing. And we have to remember that the only way somebody, an oppressor, gets to govern the, the oppressed more, more often than not is through the consent of the oppressed. We have to look at a critical juncture of the history of the Southern Cameroons and look at when we bolted out of the Eastern House of, of Assembly in Nigeria. When our representatives in the Eastern House of Assembly because of denial of being indirectly governed from Nigeria, walked out. That, that, that was in 1953. And that led to our self-government in, in Boya, cementing our independent status. And we have to inform our parliamentarians, our senators, that on September 20, 22nd of 2017, our people unambiguously unanimously demonstrated that we do not want to be governed through la republique that we do not want our our, our parliamentarians representing ambazonia in the parliament in lrc they demonstrated our independence but we still have parliamentarians who are still representing us in yaoundé and people still daring the wrath and the will of the people to register themselves on, on list to be elected as parliamentarians. Parliamentarians representing who? Our sisters and mothers have been raped. We have 200 and over 300 villages that have been burnt. We have over 13,000 Ambazonian civilians that have been innocently slaughtered. Mami Api, a lot of them were burnt live in their homes. Hospitals have been burnt. All of these monstrous casualties, and we still have parliamentarians daring to go look for a few francs or call it their own three pieces of silver to betray the people. The people have denied the consent of LRC to have any governance over them. Last night or a, 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 or, or a few hours ago, the home of Mbandam, Honorable Mbandam, was burned down to ashes in Batibu. A few hours ago, my own classmate in caste Frederick Tanjo, the mayor of Batibo, sent a letter out withdrawing himself from the list of the SDF that he was put on. 
We've seen examples of other parliamentarians in Ambazonia saying, not now, not ever, will they be on a list system associating themselves with LRC. LRC has no international legitimacy to govern us. It is a betrayal for our parliamentarians to put their names on any list for the February 9th election or any elections that are coming up in the future. So we must send a strong message and continue to deliver action towards our parliamentarians that we do not want to be governed by LRC and putting your name on any list is putting yourself in jeopardy. But also, we must organize these demonstrations that we are talking about. Shame and name them. We must continue to lobby whether it's the, U the U.S. Senate, the U.S. Congress, the U.S. State Department, and remind them of how much France is spitting in the face of the United States by going contrary to U.N. resolutions that legitimately state Ambazonia as an independent entity. So those are some of the things that we can be doing, both us in the diaspora and people on the ground. Comrade Bono, and also, do you just have one more thing. Just one more thing. The right to self-defense is an international right shrouded in international law. If you go to statutory law, if you go to common law in any jurisdiction on the, on, on, in the world, your home is your castle. Ambazonia is the castle of Ambazonians. It is our right to pick up arms and defend ourselves from marauding monstrous RRC troops supported by France who are slaughtering our people. We must own our right and privilege to fund the troops on the ground. That is another aspect that we can do to counter what France is doing in slaughtering our people. All right. Comrade Bo, do you have anything to add there before we move to uh, a different question? Yeah, let, <clears throat> let me just add a few, a few points here. N number one, I think the French taught us what to do. The French, when they faced Nazi occupation, anybody who became a collabo, those we call enablers today in Ambazonia, anybody who did that faced certain consequences in France. We should read their own history. They should teach us by their own example what our people must do. In France, under Nazi occupation, those who were fighting to take over France to return their country to the French people, including de Gaulle, who had to flee into exile in London, they did not tolerate people who were collaborating with the colonizers, with the conquerors, and with the occupiers. So the French have taught us what to do, what we need to do, what we must do, because we need to survive as a people. This is not offensive this is not aggression this is defense that our people are playing and so exactly people like mbandam who notoriously supported the terrorism law people like mbandam who went to the parliament and who claimed that they had resigned because the people of ambazonia had said so these people are going to play all kinds of tricks on the people of ambazonia it is up to us to say to them we will not tolerated in our land. So those of us on ground zero, we have to push to make sure these elections don't happen. So it's point number one. We have to push number two. Anything that is Cameroon administration is also French administration. They cannot collaborate with it in any way and they cannot grant consent to it. They should not neglect the fact that what they're doing to businesses through ghost towns, we need to step up a boycott of French products and call our, our African colleagues, our, our American friends, our British friends to join us in a boycott of French products, including their things. And we need to join a major campaign that opens in February to crash the CFA currency, to make a run on the banks and close that colonial currency. We need to be party to that process. Those of our brothers and sisters were in France. If, if, if I may, if I may stop show. you a little bit there, Comrade Bo. If you close the currency, I know lots of people have advocated for a currency for our people on ground zero. Uh, but what prospects do we have for a new currency for our people on ground zero if you close the CFA francs? The CFA franc is not a currency. It's a piece of paper. In fact, it's worse than a piece of paper. 
people are running money today on mobile money. I can send money to my people by mobile money. So they, they, we have to absolutely currency only but, works but when, when they need cash. It, you need when to they need cash, it. How, no, what do they, they do they should take with the mobile naira. money? They, our people need to find a way of accepting the naira, accepting the dollar, and accepting other currencies and doing trade by batter. They need to bring that currency to the ground. And to Don't what, you think what the it is Africa the responsibility is of uh, the leaders like you and others to figure out how that can be done? Because again, I have listened to many proposals about, hey, let's get rid of the, fr the fr uh, franc CFA and get you something better. I think they are waiting for leadership on how to proceed. Yeah, because because this is a 14-country deal. That is why February is so important. Because February is an across-Africa deal by all Francophone countries to try and crash the CFA currency. So that is a campaign we need to lead. But on in the international scene, for those of us who live abroad, we have to remember the, 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 the 60 years enough for the World Bank and the IMF campaign, which was essentially about debt forgiveness, that campaign has never happened at international level to try and bring the CFA currency to a halt. This is a crime. Just this currency is a major crime against the people of America. This is enslavement. That's what's going on. And our people need to communicate that act of enslavement as an act of enslavement not about the currency because it is not you cannot pay anything in france with a cfa franc you cannot exchange it in the french central bank but they issue it to you you cannot repay your loans to the french in the cfa currency you cannot pay repay unless you want to keep the money at the central bank in yaoundé at the bayak you cannot repay for instance the world bank on the imf with the cfa you cannot now, so this is not if I may ask, and I will pose this question to all of you, the uh, West African states are adopting a new currency, the ACAS, and most Central African states, of course, including La Republic du Cameroon, uh, isn't going to be part of that uh, arrangement. Should we, shouldn't we, Ambazonians, be looking at how we can uh, be uh, part of that arrangement? Using the ACAS, we should I will be careful. Give the question to any of you can take the question. We should be careful to do the from the fry pan to the fire thing. Uh, Mr. Emmanuel Macron, the president of France, famously went to Nigeria. And if you remember what he said, he was, if Africans want to do away with this currency, we will do away with it. Of course, he didn't mean it. Exactly as he does not mean it now when he's saying to five African heads of states, please come to France and tell me whether you want French troops. Our people have said, we don't want you. We don't want your troops, we don't want your money, we don't want your funding, we don't want anything, we want you out of our continent. So he knows what we don't want. But when he went to Nigeria, the deal was, how can we keep giant Nigeria with us? Remember, the French do everything with the blood of Africans. It took six million dear friends for, for, for France to come away with the oil uh, concessions in Nigeria and to be doing the biggest business with Nigeria today. But they are the ones who funded the rebellion. They are the ones who got Biafran slaughtered. Well, there is a movement <laughs> up there today to get rid of the French. Dr. Emma, uh, I tell just, us what I sh shouldn't... Uh, here. Chris, I'm not sure if you can hear me, but I was going to I add here you, that my focus and all of our focus should be really on how we keep up this pressure that is currently mounting on la republic to the point where they finally accept that war is not the right path to get to the solution that they want but don't you Rather, think that abducting for ambazonia to adopt adopt a new currency is part of that pressure you know i free people normally decide on what is right for them as a collective let's let's not try and um burn burn down our, our opportunities here let's capitalize on this m momentum and not let hubris drive us because this is where we start following different paths and end putting our efforts and never realizing anything i would argue rather strongly that we maintain the campaign 
to keep the eyes of the international and their involvement concrete, real, and substantial in bringing resolution to our people. The currency issue for me, no disregard to my 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 friend here, Tom Foy, on the issue of uh, France CFA. We can have a whole show on this alone, uh, and and we'll never uh, we'll not have hours in the day. But my point is really simple. The international pressure is clear. It's mounting. The steady stream of high-level delegations to A2D is not to congratulate Paul Biya on his recent war declared on Southern Cameroonian peaceful protesters. It is, I'm sure, but doors of materials as we've seen that he can never, ever win this war and must in the Swiss-led process. That's where I would rather every Southern Cameroon Ambazonia peace-loving, tired and battered to put their effort so that we can begin to engage as people who actually are convinced that negotiations only to accept here rather than even worrying about what other countries do, what the maturing is is a country. As I said, free people normally and naturally arrive at solutions that are good for them. At this point, we are just victims and, and, and um, a co-opted people into a French scheme. We never came from that tradition. It was imposed. It's just this new name that they are calling us by specialists was imposed on us as one clear path for Paul Bia to eventually in, evade crimes against humanity. So he's creating new and ever creative uh, uh, instruments to keep the international community at bay. I, I would say that we, we focus to get uh, La Republique to the table and, and ensure that the international community brings La Republique to understand that that's the clearest at this moment. All right. Uh, I'm a very strong believer that you cut off the French, uh, uh, French, uh, French CFA from our territory. You send a very strong message to both La Republique and, of course, the French that we mean business and that we have gone. Uh, you seem to uh, disagree a little bit uh, with that. But, uh, Comrade Ghana, let me give you just one minute, please. Uh, do a response to that and let's move to the subject of the special status. Uh, as, an, as an economist, uh, the definition of money is that money is what money does. And when you start formulating monetary policy, and, and by the way, I, I agree that uh, withdrawing ourselves from that French flag uh, for the reasons that have been so eloquently stated by both Comrade Bo and uh, Dr. Oso that we need to rightfully withdraw ourselves. But I think we have a lot of, we, we have some good leadership forums, be it the IG, be it Morris and other organizations that we can liaison and properly plan on how to get ourselves out of the Frank, the, the, the Frank CFA. Again, money is what money does because our, of, of, of our dependence on it for about 60 years, it is still serving a purpose which we can, with good planning and coming up with a solid blueprint, we can win our people away. I mean, there, 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 there are a lot of dollars out there and there are a lot of uh, denominations within the dollar that we can replace the CFA uh, with dollars and have our people start using the, the, the dollar as a currency, but you need, this, a, you need this a lot not, of dollars. This, this, excuse me, Mark, just, just a minute. This, this, this is not a decision that can be made within an online forum. This is something that has to be planned behind the scenes by intelligent minds within calm deliberation. All right, all right, great. Thank you, thank you for that. Let's move to could, could the I just next keep in subject one small that thing, just of a, this a uh, so called. Yes, Comrade Ball. I was just going to chip in a practical example of something. Look, okay. the dollar is not the official currency of Liberia. It is not the official currency of Nigeria, I mean of Ghana. 
It is not the official currency of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Right. But this is the currency that is most in use in these three countries. If you wanted to buy roasted plantains near the port in Congo, Kinshasa, the woman there is going to want you to pay her in dollars, not in Congolese flags. That's very correct. It is just a matter of rejecting the CFA franc currency. You start slowly, we stick with it, and people will find out that that thing, nobody wants to take it. That's a good point. I have witnessed that in Liberia, they use mostly uh, the U.S. dollars. Congo Democratic Republic, the same thing goes on there. In fact, they're virtually getting rid of their own currency and adopting the dollars. But I think it is something that uh, you, the leaders, should uh, sit behind doors, close doors, and uh, really uh, take a critical look at this and see how we can get that uh, going on ground zero. I think ground zero will very much welcome that. All right, let's move to the so-called special status. I know this really doesn't concern us because La Republic du Cameroon is living in the illusion that we are still part of their country. But we have said La Republic du Cameroon has no legal right to tell Ambazonians what they should be. And we have seen that even within their ranks, they are rejecting this so-called special status but the concern is the concern is with the help of the french is it possible that they can push this thing to the extent where the swiss initiative become needless and they implement their special status i will give any of you the chance to go first uh if, if you don't mind me taking that first i would i would, I would start that by demonstrating something you know i want to give you a million dollars from my palm if you can see my palm right now I need it right and here, i don't please. have it to give to you there is there is no way i can give you a million dollars now from my palm because i don't have it the <laughs> republic of cameroon cannot give to us what it does not have they do not even have the special status from france to turn around and give us a special status when south africa was annexing namibia South Africa tried to give Namibia some sort of a special status. It didn't work because South Africa did not have that legitimacy to give Namibia a special status. Sam Nujoma led the rebellion, led the way, and Namibia got its independence close to 1989. Uh, Same thing with Gambia. When, 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 when Gambia tried to legitimately tie itself up with Senegal, and it didn't work, Senegal did not turn around and say, we are going to give you Gambia some sort of special status. The two parties parted ways, and today they are two independent countries like they were. La Republic du Cameroon and the Southern Cameroons are two separate entities in, the, in, in international law. Again, based on the Treaty of Versailles, UN Resolution 1514XV, UN Re 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 Resolution 1608, any attempt to give Ambazonia, aka the Southern Cameroons, a special status are blind attempts to subvert, to circumvent, to undermine, and to trivialize these UN instruments, these UN resolutions and articles. You cannot do that. These UN resolutions are cemented in fact. Holding here in my hand is UN Resolution 1608XV that expresses expressly defines the independent status of the southern cameroons on 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 on, on april 21st 1961 the un voted for the independence of the southern Cam cameroons it was in a sub paragraph that they voted for us to get independence through association with la republic du cameroon the united states abstained from that vote so even in 1961 the united states had already seen that this was going to lead to problems the u.s the u.s representative to the united nations congressman zabloki protested against any independence for the southern Cam cameroons through association association with lrc we have seen the result Thirteen thousand people killed over 300 villages burned so La, La Republic du Cameroon cannot, will not, and will never be able to give us a special status. If you read through the special status, 
It's a joke. I have said it before. It's like toilet paper. It's not even worth toilet paper because toilet paper has had some use. We need to flush it back to where it came from. If you look at the unintelligent way in which they wrote the special status, you're making the head of an executive at the same time the head of the constitutional or, 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 or legislative council. It will not work. The, La Republic du Cameroon is spending millions and millions lobbying foreign lobby firms to tell lies about Ambazonia. They could use part of that money if they were earnest about creating a federation in Cameroon to go to South Africa, KwaZulu Natal, the free states. They could teach them how a state formation exists within uh, a, with, within a country in liaison with the federal government. They could go to Germany and learn about how independent states are formed. The United States provides a great example how you have separation of powers between All the right. state and the federal government. Oh. So no, that special status will never be accepted by our people and we remain with the quest for the independence of Ambazonia today, tomorrow, and forever. All right, all right. This uh, so-called special status was supposedly adopted from the Canadian uh, example with Quebec and uh, mainland Canada. Uh, but what they have prescribed in their special status, is that what obtained in Canada? Um, first, comrade, I would say I'm not an expert on, on Canada issues. I've visited frequently and I know the country a little bit. I could proudly say that it is a total misrepresentation of what Canada is. First, Canada recognized the nation of Quebec at the insistence of France. Okay, On the one hand, France is insisting for the nation of Quebec to be recognized, and they're insisting for the nation of Ambazonia never to be recognized. So it's ridiculous. Now, it, the reason we're discussing this thing is to do what my brother and Ghana just did a moment ago. This thing is supposed to go to the latrine. Uh, not, you know, I want to use that word instead of the toilet because I, I believe that there's just a, a little level lower when, when you go to the latrine. That's where it's supposed to go. This is not even supposed to be contemplated by the people of Ambazonia, and I'll tell you why. It is not even a bill. It is not a piece of legislation. When it downloaded on my computer into a Word file, it was 152 pages big. I, when I finished reading it, which was an exercise in torture, okay, just to read it. But when I finished reading it, it had one, I went back and underlined, it had 118 places where it refers to some other law that will be decided by the president of the republic, by the prime minister, <laughs> right. by the minister in charge of local government. It is nonsense. Nowhere on earth do you put to play, you put in place a law like that. A law that says, in essence, there's no reference to a she in that law. It's absolutely uh, not. Into, into Everybody point, you have he, always supported the idea his. of uh, uh, the House of Chiefs. They are giving us back the House of Chiefs. Well, look, the House of Chiefs that they conceived, <laughs> you know what will happen to the chiefs? The chief no. is going to be the vice president of some councilor that the CPDM is going to pick. They are crazy. Okay, and then they have a, 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 a ridiculous number. We are going to find 20 of them. Based on what? And then, and then everybody else is a criminal, except a certain president of the republic, the representatives of the president of the republic, and two nincompoops that he intends to appoint to take charge because when everything is done people are elected he is then going to appoint a, a secretary general from the presidency who will manage everything that is what the bill says and then they will appoint what they call a public independent conciliator whose business is to ruin everything and they do more if you start any business, any industry, they will own 30% kind of as of a right. This is communism reborn. This man used to call his book, Pulo Liberalismo Communitaire. He meant com communism by beer. This guy needs to be, you know, he needs to go back to S Siberia, wherever he's coming, but he's from 
some archaic world. He's gone to the point where he's probably going to tell you who you can marry so that you can be authentically indigent. I don't know, you can be a native. This guy right. is crazy. Let me let me go to Dr. Emad. Dr. Emad, I, I, I don't I, I doubt if you have read uh, any uh, read that bill. But you look at I, that bill, you look at that bill, mm -hmm. you see, they said they said they have taken away the post of government delegates. But what they have done is just change the title. The government delegate is still there. Now, uh, they also said they have dealt away with the position of the same government delegate, but they have a government, a government delegate who is supervising all the other mayors. Guess who is going to have the final say on every decision that the council takes? It is that secretary. So tell Ambazonians, educate Ambazonians, is there any difference from what they already have? I mean, they are still going to appoint the DOs, as the DOs are still there, the governors are still there, the people cannot even elect their governors. I mean, this is just playing uh, the devil's advocate because we know this has nothing to do with our revolution anyways. But tell the people, is there any change in what they are giving them? You know, you as you're speaking, uh, Secretary Chris, I can't help laughing. I, I listened <laughs> to my brother, Tom Poimbo, and I'm like, okay, let's let the constitutional experts deal with this. Um, there, there, there is a saying that when the Titanic is sinking, you don't go and arrange the chairs on the deck. Um, this is what comes to mind when I think about this bill and what La Republic is doing. I don't even want to spend the time and that of your audience in trying to direct, analyze and make sense of who is in charge of what and how this bill is being proposed. First and foremost, let's just accept that this is an exercise because we are here now on television and it's the current event of the day and somehow impacts southern Cameroonians by extension and therefore we have to discuss it beyond that i think i'm definitely in the same vein as tom Foyne and 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 my brother uh, uh <laughs> valentine here that this thing has a place and it's not on the table to talk about Let's look at it this way. We need to rather tell Southern Cameroonians, Amazonians, that they seem to be in this place. And I'm, I'm sidestepping your question here, Chris, for a purpose, because I want to make a point. That we are the only people in the world whose position is forever regressing. Have you watched the movie, uh, uh, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button? This guy grows up to be an adult and somehow regresses progressively to a baby. So the, the, the curious case of Southern Cameroon's Ambazonia in the eyes of La Republic is a, the, the, a metaphor for it. So as people, we are supposed to consistently self-actualize. We are consistently devolving to the point where we are this case of a special status. Now, with that in mind, let's tell our audience what special status is not. This is not home rule, where you are a democratic government with a constitution that uh, structures in place that makes sense, as you have just explained in your outing there. There are no clear divisions of power. Now, the question that we need to be asking, and ask really simple, assuming that we are, we are having this exercise, is can La Republic show us what powers they reserve for themselves? And when Ambazonians and Southern Cameroonians take a look at all the powers still in the hands of La Republic, then I believe in an understanding how they still remain a captive people, so to speak where instead, as Loyangana has said, that their rights are enshrined legally. Rights have been inherited historically. They are now being devolved and power is given to them in such limited fashion. 
So that is what this bill is not. It doesn't even begin to address the issue of autonomy because special status as stated in this piece of paper is far from that of anything close to being autonomous, which might, just might, begin to calm the tempers in the area. Now, if we want to really talk about, and I must admit, uh, reading a document like this for 15 minutes it takes or 20 minutes uh, through 100 and something pages doesn't make me an expert. But we can all agree this is yet another instrument by La Republique, the press press to asphyxiate, to annex, and to continue to subjugate because there is no transfer of power, as Tumfoin has pointed, whereby somebody sits from Yaoundé over whoever you have duly elected. And let me just make one point here for us to all appreciate, because it's really important and speaks to where La Republic wants us to stay permanently. As the national party have so far been fighting to take a share in, and we are unable to, is now reduced to a so-called special status pie. La Republique is ensuring that we devolve into tribalism, where we are fighting for ever diminutive share of what should rightly be ours. And this should be soundly rejected and thrown out the door. This is simply another way that President Bia I want your audience, all of us, to appreciate this, that in complicity with our brothers and sisters who say they represent us, meanwhile they are killing us to be continue to normalize what's happening in, in southern Amazonia, give us the word that he has an internal issue dealing with a minority population and oh, by the way, don't play in my sandbox because I'm not playing in yours. And every cast it's minority concerns. And I don't need your help to take care of it, except when you're giving me foreign aid. That is what Bia is doing with this innovative solution to a problem that he wishes not to solve, is to normalize. I want the audience to understand this as they engage, especially those who are doing so at the barrel of the gun, All and right. who sometimes this cannot be heard. That this is just I mean, yet one way to avoid being called up for crimes against humanity and to normalize and give the world a sense that this is a problem dealing with a minority group and therefore uh, international. Right, right. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, comrade, I'm, comrade Ghana, I, I'm coming to you, but uh, you can add your point to this question. This conflict began over <coughs> uh, lawyers demanding uh, that French judges, and of course teachers, demanding also that French teachers be taken out of our classrooms and judges, French judges and uh, attorney generals and court clerks be taken out of uh, the courts in the southern Cameroons. This uh, so-called bilingualism uh, uh, legislation that they passed the other day just goes back and reinstitute exactly what these lawyers did not want to see. What should the lawyers in Ambazonia be doing today? Uh, Comrade, it's, 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 it was coincidental that I happened to have been in Bamenda in March of uh, 2015. And in, and, and in March of two. I think we lost the connection there. In two point, you want to go ahead and uh, fill in the, uh, that would be great. What do you think the lawyers should be doing? I, I think the lawyers just went back to the future uh, because the lawyers were among the people that took the people to the streets. And when the people were in the streets, they left them right out there and went back, uh, kind of, you know, realizing the prediction of a certain minister of justice or of injustice 
who had said they will get hungry and they will go back to the court. Now, you will not fix your situation as Bob Marley says, you fight for freedom, you run, you're going to fight again. Our people cannot run away to come back and fight another day. But just to say something additional about this legislation, because it is out of the extraordinarily. This is not, this is not normalizing the situation. This is worse than before. If right. anybody thought that Ambazonia was colonized before, this bill finally puts a nail on the coffin. This bill are the papers of surrender that they are serving to the people of Ambazonia. You are negotiating a way which is for these people who think that federalism can work, that decentralization can work. They are negotiating a way rights that we have by way of international law and by way of UN resolutions that are non-negotiable and that cannot be dissolved by national law. By the way, the law doesn't say whether it is, in fact, it uses all the words. It uses decentralization, it uses regionalization, it uses uh, devolving powers. Uh, one thing it doesn't say, it doesn't say autonomy anywhere, anywhere on that piece of paper. So this is a piece of document meant Initially, this is La Republic waving the white flag of surrender, telling the international community, we have been beaten by the people of Ambazonia and now we must give them what they wanted. But they are telling the people of the world at the same time that what they wanted were some trade union demands by teachers and lawyers and that it was about English and about who goes to the law court and who gets appointed to the law courts. No, it is not. This is an issue, this is an identity crisis, this is an, a territorial war, this is an annexation war, this is an end to a crime against humanity that the people of Ambazonia are determined to put away. Even if they were to end up putting English-speaking, uh, and I mean Ambazonian lawyers and judges in courts in Ambazonia, there will still be an aspect of international law that has been adopted under the francophonization of our territory that will need to be repealed. That piece of legislation which led to the killings at the beginning is called the Ohada law. And the Ohada law means that for every business law, every business conflict, you must go to a court in Abidjan, a French court in Abidjan, to do the matter in, under French law, Napoleonic law. The people of Ambazonia who have nothing to do with France and Napoleonic law will have to settle business di disputes in a French court in Abidjan. Completely unacceptable. All right. Uh, Dr. Let me, Elman, let me add one, one more thing here, there. if I may. Yes, please. Let me add one more thing here. It, it's, I, I think we have to ask the question. You are currently in the throes of war you are introducing bill to change the entire character of a region and you're conducting regional municipal elections. Is President Bia asking the people of Southern Cameroon to go to the polls to vote for special status or to go to the poll and vote for status quo? These are the kinds of absurdities that baffles the mind and a, 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 a problem that we could be prosecuting single-handedly. We are, we are getting all these obstacles from someone who clearly cannot solve the problem. Because who in their right mind is currently prosecuting a war on the people that they are introducing a bill to change what it is that they are? Uh, we have been called so many things that it's it's almost uh, we could we could write books about that. So the the question that we have to be asking ourselves is: there is no situation, given what we are facing, whether it's f the, the the use of French language, whether it's our, our public service, whether it's our legal system, where we the minority twenty five percent in this greater part called Cameroon will ever prevail. Just <clears throat> no way. So it stands to reason that Yaoundé clearly is not in the uh, a peacemaking business or solution seeking business. They continuously want to assert dominance 
over a people they never cared at war, and they continuously want to insist that this type of violence is a solution. And I think we resoundingly rejected it, and they need to come to terms with that, that we need to talk about this and settle it without for the loss of life. Oh, so, right. um, and, and let me let our, our viewers out there Google the, the, the newest nation in the world called Bergenville yes. and read their path to independence today. They are supposed to be the 194th country in the world or the 196th, depending on who's counting, <laughs> of the world. And of, and of last week, just voted in a referendum to become the newest nation in the world. And when you read their path to getting here, it started and ended on the table. All right, all right. Thank you for that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have technical issues uh, connecting uh, Comrade uh, Valentine, and so we may have to continue without him. Uh, however, we have just about uh, 14 minutes to go and i thought to open the lines to our audience to be able to ask a question or uh make a comment and so i have the first caller here hello 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 sir you are on abc amber live okay good evening secretary chris good evening sir may we know where you're calling in from please Here in the US, uh, United States of America. All right, and what is uh, the question? Sorry, you are breaking up. What is the contribution? No, I was calling you on a private uh, conversation that I wanted to have with you. I don't think I will go on air now. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't realize that. All right, that will be uh, that will be later then. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have Comrade Ghana back uh, with us, and uh, I know you was making a point when we got cut off, and uh, I will give him, please, one minute, one minute, so we can quickly round this up. i give you one minute to go back to your line of thought, please. Yes, just to state that, and I want to read this Article 5 of UN Re Resolution 1608. It states that, invites the administering authority, which is Britain in this case, the government of the Southern Cameroons and the Republic of Cameroon, French Cameroon in this case, to initiate urgent discussions with a view to finalizing before October 1st, 1961, the arrangements by which the agreed and declared policies of the parties concerned will be implemented. Everything that French Cameroon has done since 1961 is to subvert this article in 1608. So 1608 was never impl implemented. Therefore, we do not have a treaty of union. If you read the biography of the French man who supervised Cameroon's transition into annexation of the Southern Cameroons, the Gaulist uh, Frenchman Pierre Mesmer, in his book titled Le Blanc Song Vong, he says, soft and apparent in annexation, annexation. Uh, my, my friend is not that good, which means, but for in appearance, it was an annexation by LRC of the Southern Cameroons. So this special status that we are talking about are the continuous attempts to circumvent UN Re Resolution 1608 as it applies to Ambazonia. It will not work. As Mr. Bo Herbert knows, the international community the UN, the United States, the European Union, Canada, all of those nations and institutions have pointed Mr. Bia to the Swiss-led initiative to negotiate the end of this conflict. This special, this aberration of the special status that they are talking about will not subvert or, or thwart the will of 1608 that granted the independence of Ambazonia. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I will now go to our first caller uh, to take uh, the first contribution. Hello, sir. Hello. Good evening, Secretary Chris. Good evening, sir. May, I, may we know where you're calling in from, please? I am Pete. I'm calling from 
Germany. Okay, and what is the contribution? Yeah, my little contribution is just that I've listened to the panelists and tears are running down my ears, my eyes. The problem with Ambazonia today is simply the problem of the parliamentarians. I think just like one of your panelists said, we left Enugu in peace. If we should look for a method to put this CPDM and SDF parliamentarians on the book, we are getting independence the next day. They should leave that parliament by hook or by crook. And uh, one of the panelists just said, we should not go in because the international community will say we are terrorists. And this is time past that word terrorism. We should bring those parliamentarians to book by any means, even if it means openly attacking them. We should make them leave that parliament. Then on the point of uh, we should go out of the firms of CFA. This is very important. And Comrade Boo said it is a little bit complicated. Yeah, it's complicated. But I want to make you to understand that if you go today in Victoria, you go to a bar in an off license with a fifty dollar you owe it fifty dollar or a fifty euro with fifty euros in a bar in a nightclub, they change that money and give you CFE. So what can we do? If we stand firm that you send money by Western Union and the person goes to the bank and says, I want dollars or I want euros, that money, if 10, 15, 20 people go to that bank and ask for euros or dollars, the bank will now look for a means to start stocking those bills of euros or dollars. Most of our business dealings are with Nigeria. If you go to a niche market with euros or with dollars to buy, to bring back to Ambazonia, they will readily accept euros or dollars in the niche market or even at ECOM. So please, our problem here is those parliamentarians. Let's look for a way, even if it is by war, to wage a war on those parliamentarians to get out and come back to Ambazonia. We will be safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the call. I will uh, let any of you take, uh, it was essentially a comment, let, but if any of you want to say something, uh, that would be great. Let, let me chime in on what the gentleman just said. I think if everybody agrees that the father of the Ambazonian revolution is His Royal Highness von Gojidinka. And when von Gojidinka went to the UN to protest our status and to reclaim our independence, what they told von Gojidinka is that there is nothing on the books uh, at, at the UN that ties the Southern Cameroons to La Republique du Cameroon. The only thing that is giving La Republique some semblance of legitimacy in its presence is Ambazonians. Are your parliamentarians attending their parliament? So the caller is absolutely unambiguously and unequivocally right. Our parliamentarians need to leave that house and no Ambazonian who is worth its soul needs to put their name on any list. And as Comrade Bo Hebert said, we need to learn from France. Those French men who betrayed France and collaborated with, 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 with Hitler, we know how France treated them. So all right, let's all right. learn from let's France. Let's try to make our answers a little shorter now so that we can take uh, quite a, a handful of calls. Uh, can I, I just let, add uh, something here? Let me uh, add something briefly, here please. to the caller question very quickly. Yes. I'd like to ask the caller that would he sign a petition if one is circulated to recall all those parliamentarians so that time has passed because they should I think that's point, a great I think that's a we, great suggestion well, most especially for ground zero if we put out a petition out there to garner a hundred thousand signatures and recall every one of those parliamentarians would he sign it so sometimes 
what we wish in our hearts, we must follow through with actions because I truly believe that if we had voted with our hearts and hands, none of them would have the legitimacy, even though they have lost the legitimacy of thinking that they do represent us in Yaoundé. All right, thank you, thank you. I will take the next question or comment and I think Comrade Bo would come in there. Hello, sir. Hello, good evening, sir. May I know where you're calling in from, please? I'm calling from Canada. Okay. What's the contribution? And, and my, yeah, my contribution is uh, I want to thank the panelists uh, for the deliberation today. It was really wonderful and very thoughtful to our people. Yeah, like all of us have agreed on one thing, but we have not really laid down a plan on how we have to deal with the parliamentarians because they well, you, the you can uh, understand we don't have to lay down the plan on television correct okay yeah so like i can see we have been so lenient with them look at the last time when uh Frundi came online on abc he was just trying to like test the water and see what we can do or what the people are ready to do like uh, like the other people came there and said, we are not really ready for for this independent because some of them are taking us for a joke. Meanwhile, our people are dying. We should not let them do this again going forward. All, All right. the parliamentarians, mayors, Jews, and whatsoever in Ambazonia, we need to get rid of them in any means possible. And we have to put that in action, not only in talking. Another point also that I want you guys to deliberate on is that the UN Security uh, Representative of Central Africa, Mr. Ford, once you listened to him last time he was presenting the case on what, he was just endorsing the special statue. That is the same system that we have to call Mr. Francois Ford in Central Africa. He is not serving the UN. He is serving the interests of the French in so in that region. He was just endorsing the special statue like what they need to solve the problem now is to implement the resolution. All right. Which all, of course, all right. All right. I think I get. Uh, I think I get your point. I will let uh, our panel to uh, deliberate on that. But uh, in two points, I think he raised uh, a very, very pertinent point with that uh, Central uh, UN Central African Secretary General. This guy basically was uh, uh, painting the French Cameroon narrative at the Security Council. What can we do? What can be done? And besides, the parliamentarians, everybody is saying they need to withdraw. Is there any other thing we can do other than what we, other than what has been done? A, a number of points here. In 2017, we had a recall vote. There's no parliamentarian representing Ambazonia. Please, we should stop bothering about these people. John Gute does not represent us. You know, uh, Agboncon does not represent us. So why are we bothered about people who are representing themselves? These people don't represent us. We have to be very clear about it and there was a recall vote. They are just as illegitimate as the SDOs that Mr. Bia appoints. These are all people <coughs> that get appointed by a rigged electoral system. So we need to focus on doing what Bergenville just did. When they referred to the vote in Bergenville, it is a non-binding referendum. We are going back to where we started this revolution, where we said, conduct a vote to tell the people of Ambazonia to line up behind their government so that that government becomes their representatives. That is how you shut down this system. That vote by Bergenville is non-binding. It was organized by the people for their own benefit. There will still be another referendum, superpotentially by the United Nations, that will lead to actual independence. But in order to make their case clear, they put out 98% of their people voting to break away from Papua New Guinea. We need to do our business on our own and let these people who have already joined the one and indivisible not confuse us. Uh, Agboncon is not one of us. He is one of La Republique. Frundi is not one of us. He is one of La Republique. They are welcome to join La Republique 
and to join their delegation to the negotiations. They are not Ambazonians. They have renounced their nationality. These people don't belong with us. All right. And no matter how many times they get rigged into votes, into positions in parliament, they do not represent the people of Ambazonia, and we should behave in that way. All right. Let me take uh, one more uh, call up before we go. Hello, sir. Hello, Secretary Chris. Uh, this is uh, UN calling from uh, Los Angeles. You mean, the, you, you mean the United Nations? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, UN the activists. <laughs> oh, so okay, the activists. Thank, All right. Go ahead, please. <laughs> I, want, I want to thank the leaders for the powerful acting of today. Um, they, have, they have done a great deal to educate our parliamentarians. And I just need them. Uh, what advice can these, our leaders, give? collectively to those Amazonians who have sent their fight against Amazonia instead of fighting La Republic, can they give them some advice that the enemy we have in this revolution is La Republic, not uh, Amazonians? Thank you. All right. Thank you for the question. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please be brief with your answers, all of you. Just bre very, br very brief. Let, let me take this one. I think, UN, thank you for that very, very important question. You stated the question, you answered the question. <coughs> if we doubt, and we inside have to consolidate our positions, uh, there is something to be said about collaborating, uh, having coherence, and that coming together is not necessarily seeking uniformity, because as you all understand, even siblings from the same mothers still have some differences, but they consolidate ranks, the close ranks, when they are dealing with a common enemy. That is clear. La Republica, brothers of La Republican sisters, are not our enemies in the physical. Their policies and aggression towards us at this point makes them enemies, and we shall ourselves against them. So what do you do? come together and face that enemy as a collective for a singular collective goal that transcends personalities, that transcends, transcends strong group identification, knowing that we, this generation, the younger generation, cannot, for God's sake, pass this tragic moment to the next generation to deal with. Our forefathers tried. For some reason, God made it such that the, the, the rise and explosion of this into war being declared on us is happening on, during our time. It would be a travesty and a complete failure for posterity would judge us harshly. If because of our division, our strong mind, strong man mentality, it must be my way or the highway. If I did not bring the initiative, I will not support it so hard mentality. If I don't have my posses line up behind me and singing my praises, I will not join somebody else's initiative. I will not lend my support morally or otherwise to something that is not part of my group. For God's sakes, my fellow Ambazonians, those on the ground, if you can hear my voice, do not allow this to make suffering longer. Most of these leaders enjoy the comfort and shores. We share in your passion. We are sympathetic. We are not there facing the barrel of the gun, but you cannot allow our internal divisions to make you continuously face the gun. So you must push up and insist on collaborating. All right. As we said, and You've heard us said very quickly, Chris, it is about getting to a negotiated, permanent, lasting peace. For those who still believe there is some other process out there, all the international uh, correspondence you've seen is pulling La Republic to facing the music. So why would we now sing to a different drummer? Let's sing to the drum beat that the international community and us have fought so long and hard and more than an entire generation is at the risk of being annihilated. My dear fellow brothers and sisters, it cannot stay this way. We must 
come together. We are not talking about uniformity. We are talking about collaborating, communicating coherently, clearly around a collective higher goal. And then at a time, we can sort out. All right. Other. All right. Thank you. Uh uh, Comrade Bo in Ghana, I'm going to take this last caller so you can then add all your comments and uh, to the last caller to this caller and we will call it a day from there. So, Bo, please. Hello. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you for this uh, opportunity. I would like to ask... Uh, Where are you calling from, uh, please? I'm calling from Swiss, sir. I'm calling from Swiss, Secretary Chris. All right. I would Go like on. to ask uh, our Comrade uh, Bo Habit. He is a lucky man, and he's 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 sitting uh, uh, at the driver's seat in 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 our depend, in independent drive, uh, uh, drive bed. My question is this: I would like him to do more. He can he can keep his uh, more risk and still be part of our uh, 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 constitutional uh, our. our our council, they, 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 <laughs> he can, he can become part of, of the IG without losing his uh, uh, identity as a leader of Morris. <laughs> Are you getting me, sir? I'm, I'm getting like, you. I hope boy is getting you too. Like, like, like the president, <laughs> like, like our current president of the, uh, Please help me say they, they can't our um, uh, our uh, constitutional council. I want I would like him to do more. I know we we, we are lucky to have him. But you 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 you, you think he is not you think he is not doing enough right now? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Why can't he be part of of of, of that council? Uh, the same goes to 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 Akangwa, you know. He, which he which cancer? His, his, which cancer? Which cancer are you referring to? The the the, the, the constitutional cancer. Oh oh oh! Our, 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 oh I our, guess our, I guess you are referring to the restoration cancer. Restoration cancer. I'm just <laughs> you you <laughs> you want you want him to be the speaker of the house or what? <laughs> yeah, I, I I I want him to do more. He should. You should get into the, the bigger picture. You, you, you can keep your memories and still be part of that. Same goes to 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 Akangwa. Okay. Akwanga, uh, okay. My last point is yeah. Uh, my last point is uh, whenever there's confusion or, or, or disagreement, it, it shouldn't be taken to the social media because last time uh, Eric Carter was saying that. Who has abused a sitting president in a provocative way? So all, all right, have, listen. Uh, all right, please, please listen. Uh, we're out of time. Uh, I wish we had called earlier, but uh, I will allow Bo to respond to uh, your appeal and your other question, and then I will give Comrade Ghana the last point. Thank you for calling, please. All right, Bo. It's your turn, please. Yeah, no, thank you very much. And thanks to the callers. Thanks for the questions. Um, number one, I will flip that demand on everyone on the ground. Every one of us. There was a time in 2016, 2017, when every one of us was fired up, when every one of us was out there when they said, come out and demonstrate. When every one of us signed those petitions, when we joined together in a spirit of camaraderie that has disappeared, this is not the responsibility of any leader, be it me or anyone else. It is the responsibility of the Ambazonian people to realize that those who have now picked up guns at great risk of life and safety have done so to add to what you were doing, not to substitute for what you were doing. And so you must be there. You must provide your own action. You must provide your own support. At my level, I can tell you, my brother, I don't sleep. I try to do everything. I work with everybody. I make it a point to make sure that I don't draw lines. But I also make it a big point to tell my brothers, 
when we are doing the wrong thing. Because I think that it is important for all of us to come together around what will bring us a solution. And it is a good point here for me to say that the international community in those last statements were indirectly, they did not write it in black and white, but anybody who did not see it is slightly blind. Because what they were saying was that Team Ambazonia, which is now at the table in Switzerland with La Republique de Cameroon, it was not getting blamed. Ambazonia was not getting blamed for being absent. So this was recognition for Team Ambazonia as being present at the table. Anyone who is waiting for another process, who thinks they can crash this process, who have promised to crash this process, you are trying to crash Ambazonia. Please get on board. If this process is wrong, we will fix it together. My brother, I said that as an old man who is supposed to serve the phone of COM as a messenger and a spokesperson, I want to be able to go back to COM and help the kingdom of COM, I one part of Ambazonia, to grow. Uh, <laughs> old people should not be in the middle of this government. They should be helping our people go forward. So that is what I would like to do. Thank you very much. Okay, I will let Comrade uh, Ghana make the... Uh, uh, a contribution to those calls, and I will still go give the last the last word to uh, Emma. Come to Ghana, please. I just want to say that the journey since 1961 has been very trying and challenging. In 1961, we were deprived of having a treaty of union. 1966, political parties were intimidated and merged by Ahijo. 1968. Honorable Ngom Babejua was overthrown as the Prime Minister of West Cameroon, unconstitutionally and in illegally by Amadou Ahijo. 1972, there was the fraudulent referendum. 1984, Corbia changed the, 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 the name from United Republic of Cameroon, which was illegitimate to the Republic of Cameroon. 1984-85, Von Gojidinka wrote the new social order, dissolved the time bomb, he was arrested, locked up, tortured in Kondogi, suffered a stroke, and went into exile. Same 1985, yours truly here led the strikes to stop the, the changing of the GCE to the back. I was arrested, locked up for months at the Gendarmerie at, at Old Town. All of us bear bronze. We've come a long way fighting. Maybe there I was actually who locked up there with you in Old Town. Okay, then, then, I then, was, then you... I was one of those picked up on that day and locked up in Keta in Old Town. Well, well, <laughs> you, 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 you were picked up on that day, but I wasn't picked up on that day. But two weeks later, after investigations, they came and arrested me in school, and I spent months there. But all of us, just like you, just like me, just like Dinka, just like Albert Mukong, just like Justice Ebon, have bear brunt of this struggle there are a lot of people listening who've lost brothers mothers uncles they say when the night is darkest the dawn is near as comrade bo articulated we are now at the swiss negotiations we might just be at the stage of capacity building but the international community has heard our cry this is not time for us to relent this is time for us to put more effort behind the struggle. Don't have an excuse of some misappropriation or some mistakes that happened in the past to take yourself from supporting the struggle. Whether it's more risk, whether it's the interim government, whether they are the forces on the ground, find a way to support. Also support your local families back at home, your local churches, because they are the ones bearing the biggest brunt of this struggle. But a large reason why the international community is listening to us is because we are singing the claim of our stake to freedom through the barrel of the gun, through the barrel of AK 47s. Support the forces of the ground, support county by county, support your LGA areas, and by all means, don't brutalize your own brothers. It is wrong for Ambazonians to engage in atrocities against Ambazonians. Totally wrong. All right. Adhere to 1948 Geneva Conventions that respect the rights of war and respect human rights during times of war. 
the end is nearer than we think as comrade Bo said two years three years ago we're all clamoring and joining hands a lot of people have pulled back this is not the time to pull back with your purse or with your efforts and let's not be too critical of each other let's support each other as we dash towards the finish line in freeing ambazonia all right thank you thank you dr emma i give you the last word thank you for that i i think my friend and uh, uh an able lawyer here summarized it all but suffice to say that um we we must continue to acknowledge the efforts and the sacrifices by all those on the ground those who have died those who are currently languishing in the bushes and we must also uh, do all to wait, uh, as, as they would say in football, same, or same goal and running interferences on our own side, but rather try to collaborate. I wanted to point out to you, Chris, that um, there is a website called reliefweb.int that um, your audience might access to get and also submit information is going on in La Republic. It's a UN website to get recent statistics on, on the atrocities going there. So okay. we can always share information. Mind you, some of this information might be dated or not up to date as what we have. But that, that's what I wanted to share. In conclusion, all, all the world bodies are clear on one thing. The solutions that BIA has tried to throw at the problem caused are not working. The world is calling President Bia to end the hostilities, to end the war, and go to the negotiation table. There is no other way than for us to also orient and show the world our commitment, our readiness, our pragmatism, our peaceful orientation, and engage in the same process. So I, I still want to go back to my last appeal to say that we need to we need to do all these things. And let's conclude by reminding our brothers and sisters who are collaborators and conspirators, along with the genocide that is being committed on us, to give the world a semblance of normality that posterity will not judge them kindly. And we must also hold a ground in rejecting soundly that they do not represent us within a government that insists that they have not killed us. We are a second class in the land of our birth. All right. Comrade Bo, very briefly, please. Um, if I'm going to conclude, um, let me just say, people of Ambazonia, look, <laughs> you have done amazing work. Anywhere else where people have had a fight, it has taken them 25 years, 30 years to get to where you are. Please give yourself a big pat on the back. We re referenced the people of Bergenville. We were saying how great it was that they were getting there. But they started fighting in 1978. They had a ceasefire in 2001. They only voted this year to move to independence. What is going for Ambazonia is an amazing thing. It is that you are not negotiating what Eritrea negotiated or South Sudan because you already have that. You already have your frontiers clearly defined. You have your recognition as a people. You have a UN resolution backing you. You have international treaties clearly delimiting your territory. The only thing our people don't have today is all of us going out there and rallying in support of a government that we pick and give ourselves, which does not have to be the perfect government because it does not exist. I live in the United States, they fight each other, including over an impeachment right now. There is no perfect government. We need to rally around one so that it can provide us leadership. But the best way for us to do it so that the international community can take us seriously is for all of us to go out and play that one government with one vote, all of us, millions of votes, to tell the world it is absolutely not possible for anyone else to lord it over us. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Emma, please, can you repeat the name of that website you just mentioned? I think some people need to want to... It's reliefweb.int forward slash country 
forward slash CMR. That's where the UN uh, updates on a monthly basis uh, data on the war as well as resources. Uh, there's another website, I do apologize, I don't have it handy, for a listing of all partners working with the UN um, humanitarian office in Cameroon that our viewers, I, I, will, I will give that to you, Chris, so you can I will share. In the background, so, yes. so our viewers can be able to identify local partners in their areas that have been vetted by the UN and working with local population. Uh, and also uh, for those restoration forces and their handlers to be able to know who these individuals are and, and give them on fetter access and get to people in, in need. Because that is an area that's, that should be dear to all of our hearts, especially during this time of Christmas, to see what little relief we can bring to all these people. So um, cut that. that um, URL and share with you, Chris, and you can put it All up. right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, uh, for uh, coming on board. I want to believe our people have uh, gained a lot listening to all of you, and uh, Ground Zero has also learned a lot uh, listening, uh, listening to you. And uh, again, I just want to thank you for saying, oh, we have to do this again and again and again and again until we are back in Boya. Uh, Emma, thank you. Uh, Ghana, thank you. Ntumfo, thank you. And you have a great thank night. Thank you, my sir. pleasure. Thank, thank, thank you, you as well. It's, it's an honor and privilege. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that was it before I leave. I'd like to uh, remind you, uh, as you have heard from our panelists, we need your support. When I say we, I mean this revolution. Whatever local government or county you come from, it needs your support. God has blessed us. We've taken this revolution so far, and this is not the time to look back. But the only way to stay on course is to support to support the revolution. So please, look for your local government, look for your uh, 